By the end of this video, you will see how to configure Google Tag Manager container on your website, how to create conversion actions and conversion labels on your Google Ads account, and how to configure view item data layer. And finally, we will do some testing to make sure everything is working all right. Before we start, we need to make sure that you have proper access to WordPress, Google Tag Manager, and Google Analytics. To get proper access to Google Ads account, all you have to do is make sure that you are on your ads.google.com and you have selected the proper account. Then go to admin and user access and security. Find your user email and make sure that you have either admin level of access or you have standard level of access. Both of the access were fine to creating conversion action later in the video. You also need to make sure that you have either admin access to the Google Tag Manager account or you do have publish access to the container. To verify both of this information, you can go to the admin section of your Google Tag Manager container and to check for the account setting, click on the user management under account. And here you need to have publish access to the container or you can simply go to the container that you have and click under user management. If you do have admin access to the account level, you can just click on yourself and give you any access like either edit, remove or publish or if you're asking your client, make sure that they give you publish access to this account. Once you've confirmed that, the third thing you need is admin access to their WordPress account so you can add plugins and update settings that you need. Just to make sure that you have proper access, go to the WordPress backend, click on all users and then find your user and make sure that it has admin access under the rules. Once you've confirmed all of these things, we can move to the next step which is configuring Google Tag Manager container on the WooCommerce website. If you don't know what Google Tag Manager is, let me give you a quick introduction to Google Tag Manager. This is basically an umbrella which will hold all of your tags, scripts and tracking script that you're going to deploy on your website. So you don't have to go back to the website and edit any code. You can just use Google Tag Manager for that. So in order to add Google Tag Manager code snippet on your website, there are multiple options. However, since we are going to be working with e-commerce events, which is view item, we have to use some sort of a data layers plugin that will create data layer for us. The most famous one is called GTM for WP. If you go to the plugin section and click on add new plugin, this will take you another page where you can add plugins to your website. Just search for the plugin name. GDM for WP and the plugin will show up. This plugin is created by Thomas Greger. Click on install now and once the installation has been completed, click on the activate button. Now the plugin has been activated and it has redirected us back to the plugin page. However, if the redirect does not happen, you can just click on install plugin. Click on the settings right under the GTM for WP and the only thing we need here is the Google Tag Manager container ID. To get the Google Tag Manager container ID, you can go back to the Google Tag Manager container and here on the admin page, you can see the ID right here. If you cannot find ID right here, you can just click on install Google Tag Manager container and this will show you the ID right here. So let's copy this ID and go back to the plugin and paste the ID right here. Let's hit on save changes just to make sure that these changes that we have created, they are actually published. There is one minor issue with this plugin is that as soon as you hit save changes, this will change the container code from on to off. So make sure that the container code is always set to on and then hit on save changes again. Great. They should have ideally added Google Tag Manager container across the pages of the website. However, it's really good to make sure that everything is working. So let's just go back to the Google Tag Manager container, go to the workspace tab. And then let's just click on the preview button. Once you will click on the preview button, this will give you an option to connect the debug window with our website. This temporary debug window will help us see what kind of events are firing on the website and later with the debugging. Great. Once the debugging window has been connected to your website, you can just see using this Google Tag Legacy Chrome extension what kind of containers are firing on your website. Since we only have one Google Tag Manager container, we can see that the tag is fine. As long as this tag ID here is green or blue, it's fine. The only thing we are looking for is should not be red or yellow. You can also verify the same information from this bottom snippet which says the tag manager has been connected. And once you go back to the debug window, you should see all of the event under this container. If you have more than one Google Tag Manager container or more than one account, you will see multiple container here. However, since we only have one, we are seeing one container. Now our Google Tag Manager container is working fine. Now we have to make sure we get some way to track the view item event. That is whenever user goes to a particular product page, we should be able to track that. Let's go to the back end of the WordPress website and click on integrations. On integration, you will see an option for WooCommerce. Let's just select track e-commerce event and scroll all the way down and select the option for clear object before new events and then hit save. Doing this one simple thing should add the data layer on your website. Now let's just make sure that the view item data layer is properly working. Let's go to our website and select any of the products that we have. Great, now we have loaded this product and if you go back to the debug window, right here we can see an 
event which is called view item. If you expand this API call, you can see that it has all sorts of information such as currency, value, item ID, and all the good things that we need. Great, now we have all the things that we needed. Now the next step is to create the conversion action for Google Ads so that we can track this event inside Google Ads account. Now let's just go to our Google Ads account, select goals, and then click on summary. Once you go to this page, this is where you can manage all the conversion actions that you have on your website. Since we need a new conversion action, let's click on new. And the method that we are going to use is Google Tag Manager and website. So let's just click on website. Let's add the URL of the website right here. Let me copy this URL and paste it right here and hit snap. Great. Uh, we have to create a manual conversion action. So let's click on manual. We don't have any specific category for view item list events. So usually I like to keep it under the others category. So let's rename it view underscore item. We do want to track value and each conversion will have different value. We will set that up in Google Tag Manager. We want to track every event and the rest of the setting you can change how you need. So let's hit done and let's click on save and continue. Doing this one step should give you the conversion IDs and the conversion labels that we need. So let's just go to Tag Manager and copy this conversion ID and then we are also going to copy this conversion label. Let's just go back to the Google Tag Manager container and before creating the conversion tag for view item event, we need a conversion linker that fires on all pages of the website. You can consider this conversion linker as like a configuration tag that we have for Google Analytics. So let's select all pages and then let's select conversion linker that will fire on all the pages of the website. Let's rename it at Google Ads conversion linker. Great, let's hit save. Now we have successfully added the conversion linker tag. Let me open this debug window side by side so we can see what kind of events are firing on the web page and it would be much easier for us to create events right here. The first thing we need is a trigger because we don't want this view item event to fire on all the pages of the website. So let's just go to the triggers tab and create a trigger that is specifically going to fire whenever the custom event is view item. So let's click on new and the type of the trigger we are looking for is custom event. Let's copy this name from here and we can paste it right here. Great. To rename this event, we can call it custom event and view item. Awesome. Now we have renamed the event and this is the trigger that we are going to use for other things. We also need some other information such as currency, items, array and value. So let's create variables for this one. Since we already have all of this information inside the data layer, we can create data layer variable for this thing. Let's create the first data layer variable, which is e-commerce.currency. Great, let's rename this to DLV ecommerce.currency. Now we have to create the same thing for value. So let's create another data layer variable which will track the value parameter. Let's rename this to DLV ecommerce.value. And the last one we need is for the items array. So let's just create that one. Let's call it DLV ecommerce items. Perfect, we have all the variables that we needed for this event so we can maximize this screen. Go back to the tag section and create the conversion action that we need. Let's click on new. And since we have already created the new trigger, I'm going to select that. And for the tag type, we, the first tag that we need to create is the Google Ads conversion tracking. So let's select conversion tracking. The first thing it needs is the conversion ID. So let's copy the conversion ID from the Google Tag Manager. Let's create a constant variable for this one too because constant variables are always good so we don't have to copy and paste the ID again and again. So let's rename it to Google Ads Conversion ID and let's hit save. Great, now we have to add a conversion label here. So let's copy this conversion label and go back to the Google Tag Manager and create a new variable for this one. Let's rename this to Google Ads Conversion Label and this one is for view underscore item. Great, let's hit save on this one. For the conversion value, we already have created a variable which is DLV e-commerce value, so I'm going to select that. We don't have transaction ID when we are doing the view item event, however, we do have the currency ID. So let's select the currency array, great. We can also send the product information either by directly picking up the items array right here at the fifth column or we can just select it to data layer and it will automatically pick up the information. We don't have user information and we don't have new customer data and we don't have shipping information. So these are the only things that we can send with the view item email. So let's rename this tag to Google Ads Conversion Tracking View Underscore Item. Great, we have successfully configured view item event for Google Ads Conversion Tracking. However, 
We also need to do the same thing for the remarketing tag. Let's quickly create the remarketing tag. We can go to Google Ads and select the remarketing tag. And the only thing it needs is the conversion ID. So let's select the Google Ads conversion ID from right here. And the next thing we need is the conversion label. So let's select the conversion label. We want to enable dynamic remarketing. The name of the event is view underscore item. We do have the value parameter. So let's select value. And the items array is inside DLV e-commerce.items. We can select user data. However, we don't have any custom information that we want to send. So we can also set it to none. We don't have user ID and we can skip that part. So let's rename this tag to Google Ads remarketing tag for view underscore item. Let's hit save. Now this should have successfully added Google Tag Manager, conversion tracking and remarketing tracking. However, it's really good to always be sure and do a test before publishing changes. So let's open this debug window on our website side by side to just make sure everything is working all right. What I'm going to do is that go to any of the product pages that we have. So let's go to this product page again. And once we are on this product page, you will see that the event are here. And once you go to the view item list, you can see that the Google Ads conversion tracking tag has fired and the view item tag has fired. You can also see that there is a new container on the top, which says that the conversion event has been tracked. You can also verify the same information by going to this tag assistant window and you will see that we have fired the conversion tag and it is the same conversion ID. It has the value, it has the currency parameter. If you want to see more information, you can just go to URLs and then click on this button, which will make sure everything is pretty. And then you can see all the things that we are sending with this first series event. We are sending the title of the page. This information is coming inside from the items array that we have. Now we have tracked all the information that we needed for view item event. The only thing is left is to publish the changes. So let's just quickly go ahead and make sure the changes has been published. So let's add tracking academy and then write g ads view item event great now if you want to track view item list event we need to make sure that everything is working all right and to, for that you can click on this video